G'day and welcome back. I've been wanting to do a follow-up video for my puzzle box model linked in the description below, paying particular attention to the preparation and post-processing of the core. Here is the finished and assembled puzzle box from the previous video. As you can see the dials on the top and bottom or ends turn uh, and at some point unlock the two halves which separate uh, turn and lock again. The core sits in the middle and has these teeth uh, which align with tracks in each half of the box uh, allowing it to move and turn. Um, as to how to get it in there, uh, see my previous video. Okay, let's get to it. I have a fully stock Ender 3 and use the Ender 3 profile which comes with Cura. Uh, the only settings I've fiddled with are things like wall thickness and enabling or disabling support depending on the model. Uh, I print with a skirt just to prime the nozzle and check level when starting a print, um, otherwise no rafts, uh, I print directly on the print surface. Let's start with this tolerance gauge which is straight off the printer. Uh, the 0 0.5 and 0 0.35 spools turn freely and we should be able to free up some more. Um, now I haven't previously attempted to free any more up so they're all, uh, they're all fused solid. So let's see if we can print, uh, separate the 0.3. So we just uh, insert our tool and we can start turning the 0.3 with uh, fairly low effort. Uh, let's move on to 0.25. Uh, so I'm just inserting my clippers here and we give it a bit of a turn and we're able to get 0.25 with a bit of effort. Now I'm hoping to get down to about 0.2. It um, seems to be sort of the common, common limit um, people are getting off these tolerance gauges without going too crazy. It's a bit hard. So, I did damage the, um, the slot there, it's not really a good, um, doesn't work as a good screwdriver this thing, um, but we've actually broken that spool. Now I've only printed this with three walls, so there's um, not a lot of plastic there. Um, it looks like it would almost move, um, probably if I gave it a good whack vertically I reckon that would have freed it up to start with. Let's just try that. No. Okay. Well, let's call that a loss. So I was able to get, to get down to 0.25. Um, so the main, that, that demonstrates the main thing I wanted to show is that my printer is not tuned to unreasonable limits. So I can only get down to, um, on a good day, let's say 0.2. I, I think just looking at it, there is, a, there is a gap there. I think it probably would free up um, if we took a bit more care. Um, but 0.25 is pretty attainable by most standards, I would say. Okay, so next we move on to the actual core. So I've got a few here that I've printed previously. Um, and as you can see, the gears turn, the center gears turn. And note that each of these gears run all the way through the gearbox as a single piece. Um, the only gears that are separated vertically are the outermost ring gears. They're the only ones that um, turn at a different rate as those centre gears are turned. So I've just put a mark on the outside there to, to indicate how those gears turn. So basically what we want is to free up all the internal gears and separate uh, the ring gears vertically to have a functioning um, core. Uh, you can also see on some of these I've, um, 
I've inserted a spring. Um, that's also a new addition since the last video. We'll see if we can get back to that one. Okay, so here is a core that is fresh off the printer. Full disclosure, this isn't straight off the printer literally. I have actually taken to the top of this with a bit of sandpaper just to make a bit of clearance and also had a bit of elephant's foot going on on the bottom here. I've just trimmed that off with a, um, with a razor. Um, otherwise, this is how it comes off the printer. So it's, it's fused solid. That's a good thing because these gears will loosen up over time as they're broken in. So we don't want them to start off loose. We want them as tight as we could possibly get them but obviously still be able to separate them. So we're sort of pushing the limits of what, what we can get away with here. So this is a new addition. So we have a, a secondary locking mechanism. So I've made these two little tools here and these are the same shape as the, the dials on the external halves. And basically that will insert into these slots and turn. Um, but then once it's turned, it won't remove. It locks in. So the only way to remove it is to return it to the centre position and then pull it out. So they've just got a bit of movement internally. Um, and that was the, the main reason why I needed that extra clearance um, at the top. Um, the bottom was fine um, because obviously you've got the build plate squishing that in. Um, but the top was just a bit, um, there wasn't quite enough clearance there. It needed a bit of extra help. So to free up the outer ring gears, now remember all those internal gears go all the way through. We don't want to delaminate them. Um, we only just want to um, break the seal. Um, you can see those layer lines. Well, a bit of inconsistency in my extrusion, but you can see um, at certain intervals there's a very distinct break. Uh, and that's the layer gap, um, which is where we'd like it to separate. Um, and if we turn it around, some places are wider than others. So um, just here, you very easily get a, a tool in that gap. So that's a good place to start. Um, I'm going to start with this spatula um, that came with my Ender 3 as a fairly ubiquitous tool that anyone with a 3D printer is likely to have. Um, but my favourite tool for the job uh, is actually one of these, just a... Uh, small razor blade. Um, these things will happily delaminate any two layers you stick them between uh, with minimal effort. So um, careful with that but very effective. Okay so we just want to insert that into the gap until we hear that crack. And that crack is the sound of the layers delaminating which is all we need. We don't need to go deep. Uh, we don't need to go all the way. We just need to get it started. Uh, and as long as we have a, a good crack all the way around, um, we should be good to go. So that's one layer pretty much done. Uh, just all the way around. Um, yeah, just for demonstration I'm going to get out my razor blade as well and do the rest. Um, this is pretty effortless. Um, once you find the right spot uh, it will just glide right in there so don't go too deep. You just want to just get those outer layers started because as we start turning the gears it will it will free up the rest. Now this particular version has five layers, so two lots of skinny gears on the outer edge, a thick one in the middle that stays together.
So now we've separated the outer rings. Um, they're still pretty well attached to the planet gears there. Um, let's just um, see if we can rock this back and forth now. I'm taking extra care not to deform um, this little keyhole. Still applying just a bit more pressure than I'm comfortable with, so I'm just going to take this away and give this a few whacks with a hammer. Okay, so here we are in the garage. Um, so, firstly, I'm going to support it by this dowel, get a few light taps. And turn it over, do the same thing. This one's a bit tighter than usual. Usually I can get a bit of movement of at least the centre gear. Still nothing. All right, now we get a few wax on the side. Now I can feel a bit of movement with my fingers, so I think I think we're there. Um, let's take it back inside and finish it off. Okay, I think uh, we're almost there. So um, the dowel in this case didn't seem to be all that effective, and it's probably best to avoid compressing that centre gear uh, with that little keyhole in the ends. Let's just make sure we haven't damaged it. Yep, no, still functions. Good. Um, but we're all but free. I can actually feel that moving um, under my fingers. I could actually probably turn it with my fingers. And I can. So we didn't even need the side cutters in the end. Uh, so what was most effective was simply putting, um, putting it on its side and hitting it with a hammer. And that will cause it to flex um, and break away from those those gears. So that was most effective. Um, otherwise, we can still use this tool to just um, rock it back and forth and just finish separating those ring gears, which may still have a few pieces holding them together. Um, there we go. So now we're completely freed up. Um, there's no rattling of the gears, so we're nice and tight, which is good, which is exactly what we want. Um, so the last thing, so we can, I usually um, put these on the drill, uh, so you could use a straight screwdriver bit or something just to um, grab that and turn it, um, and just give it a few minutes just to um, really work it in. Um, it might be worth marking a line on the side like I've done here uh, just so you know when you get back to the home position because it does take quite a few thousand turns to um, return back to the home position um, and the only other step would be to lubricate so I usually just get a dab of um, petroleum jelly and stick it in either end and just sort of work that in by turning the gears um, some have said that petroleum jelly will attack PLA, but I've not noticed any issues. And um, I mean, this is not a, a high load bearing component, so I'm not too worried about that. There we have it. So that's um, that's basically how we get a functioning core, um, and that will loosen up significantly um, when it's turning. Um, and for this case, because we don't have a good purchase on these dials, you probably do want it to rotate fairly freely. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, working that in on a on a drill. 
All right. Thanks for coming.